1972, a French factory began importing high-quality rare uranium ore from Oklo in Africa's Gabon Republic. Many quickly began to wonder where they had acquired such a difficult thing to make. It turned out that the uranium had come from a place which should have rewritten the history books, yet it seems to have been quietly brushed into the archives of the past. They found the site of origin had functioned as a large-scale nuclear reactor. Amazingly though, this reactor was in operation some 1.8 million years ago and was functioning for over 500,000 years. These unbelievable claims were not made lightly, or indeed by anybody. They were conclusions by some of the greatest minds on Earth. For example, Dr. Glenn T. Seaborg, former head of the United States Atomic Energy Commission and Nobel Prize winner for his work in the synthesis of heavy elements, explained to the press why he believed it wasn't a natural phenomenon and must have been a man-made nuclear reactor. He stated that for uranium to burn in a reaction, very precise conditions are needed. The water must be extremely pure, much purer than exists anywhere naturally. The material, U-235, is also necessary for this type of nuclear fission to occur, one of the isotopes not found naturally in uranium. Additionally, several specialists in reactor engineering have also come forward to testify that they believe the uranium in Oklo could not have been rich in U-235 enough for a reaction to take place naturally. It must have, somehow, been a man-made operation. And new research has only deepened the mystery, confirming that water regulated the nuclear reactions in a cyclic pattern similar to that of a geyser. Alex Meshik and his colleagues at Washington University of St. Louis have determined that the Oklo reactor, which comprises several separate sites, ran for 30 minutes and then shut off for two and a half hours before starting over. The time is characteristic of water infiltrating rocks and then being boiled off once reaction started. When the water all boiled away, the reaction stopped until new water percolated back down. This geyser-like activity also prevented a runaway reaction. It's amazing it didn't explode, Message said. Instead, it efficiently released energy in short pulses for an extremely long period of time. Just who could have possibly been around over 1.8 million years ago? Or more specifically, able to enrich uranium and create nuclear power? Is man's history on Earth really that old? It seems, according to numerous nuclear specialists and the compelling evidence they present, that is exactly the case. When Austrian explorer Arthur Poznanski performed a study on Puma Punku in 1926, he later hypothesized that it was, in fact, one of the oldest archaeological sites on the face of the Earth, an ancient ruin dating back at least 15,000 years ago. Poznanski was one of the first explorers of the modern age to have ever investigated Puma Punku's incredible existence. But as our regular viewers would have predicted, his hypothesis is staunchly denied by academics worldwide. Yet regardless of this, his sound reasoning, and indeed that of many other critically-minded individuals, means that his theory is one many others have arrived at, thus it continues to have many supporters to this day. And although mainstream academia persists in their attempts to place this amazing and largely inexplicable site's date of construction within permitted timelines, claiming to have carbon dating done at the site which places its origins at around 500 BC, supporters of a greater age dismiss this dating as unreliable, and due to our own in-depth and many years of investigative experience regarding these ruins, tend to agree that the site is indeed far older, and due to there having been an ice age around 10,000 years ago, this dating made by Poznanski would put it right where one would expect to have found it if it was indeed the work of a pre-cataclysmic civilization, with Puma Punku being a surviving relic of their incredible legacy. Additionally, archaeologist and researcher Neil Steed has also investigated a relationship with astronomical alignments. He discovered intriguing supporting evidence for this controversial opinion finding that it was built to coincide with winter and summer solstice and a precise alignment with the spring equinox as well. 
However, these events would have only been perfectly aligned with the temples over 17,000 years ago. We have long argued against a field of study that is not only assumptive in method, but is also conspiratorial in nature. Any dating of any relic which cannot be explained is merely an attempt to muddy the waters of understanding, often obscured with an in-depth volley of detailed and competent investigations into civilizations, we posit merely re-inhabited said sites within known recent well-studied history. This convincing tale of events, however, is short-lived if one explores any of the said sites with a logical eye. One soon finds that many characteristics on display are not only found globally, which on its own is compelling proof of a past global superpower, but the countless trilithons, enormous megaliths some reaching into the thousands of tons, along with highly advanced, incredibly accurate, yet unknown masonry techniques, all tell a story which academics who never seem to mention said features cannot explain. Not to mention melting pots of ancient academic anomalies, such as that of Puma Punku. How can anyone logically claim that the astonishing precision on show at the site, along with the many basalt megalithic platforms weighing many hundreds of tons, all indicative of a past highly capable, technologically advanced civilization, once having been responsible and once one grasps just how many holes can be found within mainstream opinion, they can be forgiven for doubting said tale of events, especially when those who tell such tales actively attempt to conceal such unexplainable features. Who built Puma Punku? Is it really over 15,000 years old? How would one cut such precision stonework without precision machinery? It is a place which we find highly compelling. Over the past few years, we have touched upon many of the amazing and often extremely ancient sites which dot our Earth. Many of these spectacular achievements, indicating to the countless specialists, archaeologists, geologists, and others involved, attempting unraveling of their true history, their true story of antiquity. On several occasions, we have been confronted with compelling and often conclusive explorative analysis, which has often resulted in the retrieval of compelling supportive artifacts which have supported the claim of them surviving past cataclysm, often accompanied by an ice age. Our sharing of this data has regularly received a mixed reception. The Sphinx, for example, which shows clear evidence of surviving this past event and subsequent ice age, which involved a flood event. We saw that many were interested in this premise, yet not convinced of such claims. However, a gentleman known as Mario Bildreps has taken this theory and, if confirmed to be correct in his preliminary findings, may have established it as a fact beyond all possible doubt. A link to his website will, of course, be in the description. Mario, it seems, has been very busy. He has correlated the orientation of over 500 ancient pyramids and temples randomly spread around the world to what he claims is a 99% accuracy to the temperature changes during the last glaciation cycles. Most ancient structures, therefore, he has concluded, are hundreds of thousands of years old and not just a few thousand. Many of the pyramids and temples have been renovated over the millennia, new structures forming on top of older foundations, while the orientation of these foundations remain unchanged. Chichen Itza and Baalbek are two good examples of this practice. He states that the proof is mathematically backed up from start to finish. He adds, the orientation of a building is purely mathematical, because orientation is dimensionless or not materialistic. When we process the orientations of virtually all ancient buildings around the world, it reveals a profound discovery. He claims his research is so new, so innovating, that you won't find anything like this anywhere else, except maybe some copies of this original material on other websites. About 57% of the 501 randomly spread ancient structures that were involved in this research accumulate massively in five clusters of together just 20 degrees or 22.2% along the intersection line. This line is also a purely mathematical entity 
that runs from our current North Pole to our current South Pole, along a longitude of 47.1 degrees west. It appears a big chunk of his research has been directed towards developing a cardinal reference line, an imaginary line drawn upon the globe which could be used to match ancient structures to a past location of the cardinal points. Of course, if his mathematics can be peer-reviewed and ultimately found to be correct, he could truly be on to something. His research will not only push back the theories involving the chronological development of man, but also prove beyond doubt pre-Columbian voyage up to a half a million years ago, among many other startling realities. The collective orientation of contemporary buildings points almost exactly at our current geographic pole. You might say that the collective unconscious orients itself to the geographical pole, or as many people would say, to the sun. The more data you gather, whether it's in a region, one country, one continent, or the whole world, the more obvious it becomes that contemporary buildings add up to the geographic pole. There is no contemporary culture to find that has a preference for a specific orientation other than a cardinal orientation. It is undoubtedly interesting research, which we implore you to peruse further. We will keep you posted on future developments regarding Mario's work. Many people from around the world have now, fortunately, been presented with and hopefully convinced enough thanks to platforms such as YouTube particularly Egyptian constructional revisionists, to now realize that there are many as yet unexplained feats of ancient engineering which literally drenches these magnificent structures and its equally mysterious sandstone plateau below. Yet we further expose many other indicative features which were seemingly impossible feats of ancient engineering which we hope has helped a lot of people to realize that there are many fallacies in historical doctrine many gaps in academic and curricular understandings, many things dismissed with flaky strategies and theories which have again and again, thanks to modern computer engines, been proven as impossible maneuvers. It seems many people and a considerable amount of money goes into keeping a stranglehold over the pyramid's possible origins and original function, inevitably shrouding these structures in a veil of secrecy. In addition to the original pyramid blocks and the enormous megalithic exoskeleton visible in a few obscure areas of the pyramid's lower regions, we have also in the past put forward the hypothesis that due to the advanced nature of many of the pyramid's casing stones and the drastic differences in ages they appear to be, all made with the same type of rock, thus to display such drastically different levels of erosion is undeniably evidence of them being installed at many different times. Yet although claimed as being built within known history, no documentation of the installation of the blocks, or indeed any explanation as to how these pyramids were built, all remain elusive. Several different styles were put upon these monuments, we feel, at vastly different times within antiquity. We posit that they are clear proofs of a number of past civilizations' conservation efforts, but due to these compelling and visible proofs, one has to consider that the Great Pyramid's origins are vastly more prehistoric than could ever be publicly accepted, and due to these features having seemingly survived due to what we suspect was a number of considerable efforts to shield them from the environment by a number of different, extremely ancient, yet all highly capable yet now lost civilizations, which we have identified in previous work as that of the Cyclopean civilization and the Polygonal civilization. But I digress. Many of you who have donated towards the channel and to reserve a book may be wondering when the channel's accompanying books will be published. However, I assure you Mystery History intends to go in-depth regarding his and other findings surrounding not only the ancient pyramids, but also the many other compelling, seemingly impossible ancient legacies found throughout Giza's plateau and many museums, and many other controversial sleuth-gathered factors from throughout antiquity. Creating the type of evidence-driven, visually illustrated examinational content in which the books will be exclusively focused upon. All of these factors are reasons why the books will not be written hastily. As my knowledge grows, so does my understanding of what makes ancient ruins so enigmatic 
and I believe the larger my research, the better the go-to guides will eventually be. I just wanted to reassure you that mystery history has not forgotten about any of you. Returning to our opening statement, however, many are now aware that there does not exist a valid explanation for the construction of the pyramids. Even if one had unlimited slaves, it is not a case of muscle, but rather a lack of space in which to utilize such. Yet what many who have not explored Giza and the surrounding connected ruins on foot are often oblivious of the astonishing array of ancient temples, clearly dating from the pyramid builders, not only lost for eons in the sand of the Sahara, but has preserved some in astonishing conditions. Ancient Egypt, its great pyramids, its eight-sided Cheops, its incredibly well-preserved, once long-engulfed temples, and the inexplicable stonework of ancient Egypt is but one of many areas from a world of ruins which we not only intend to unravel as much as possible, but it is an investigational struggle which we find highly compelling. When Austrian explorer Arthur Poznanski performed a study on Puma Puntku in 1926, he later hypothesized that it was, in fact, one of the oldest archaeological sites on the face of the Earth an ancient ruin dating back at least 15,000 years ago. Poznanski was one of the first explorers of the modern age to have ever investigated Puma Puntku's incredible existence. But as our regular viewers would have predicted, his hypothesis is staunchly denied by academics worldwide. Yet regardless of this, his sound reasoning, and indeed that of many other critically-minded individuals, means that his theory is one many others have arrived at, thus it continues to have many supporters to this day. And although mainstream academia persists in their attempts to place this amazing and largely inexplicable site's date of construction within permitted timelines, claiming to have carbon dating done at the site which places its origins at around 500 BC, Supporters of a greater age dismiss this dating as unreliable, and due to our own in-depth and many years of investigative experience regarding these ruins, tend to agree that the site is indeed far older, and due to there having been an ice age around 10,000 years ago, this dating made by Poznanski would put it right where one would expect to have found it if it was indeed the work of a pre-cataclysmic civilization with Puma Punku being a surviving relic of their incredible legacy. Additionally, archaeologist and researcher Neil Steed has also investigated a relationship with astronomical alignments. He discovered intriguing supporting evidence for this controversial opinion. Finding that it was built to coincide with winter and summer solstice, and a precise alignment with the spring equinox as well. However, these events would have only been perfectly aligned with the temples over 17,000 years ago. We have long argued against a field of study that is not only assumptive in method, but is also conspiratorial in nature. Any dating of any relic which cannot be explained is merely an attempt to muddy the waters of understanding, often obscured with an in-depth volley of detailed and competent investigations into civilizations. We posit merely re-inhabited said sites within known, recent, well-studied history. This convincing tale of events, however, is short-lived if one explores any of the said sites with a logical eye. One soon finds that many characteristics on display are not only found globally, which on its own is compelling proof of a past global superpower, but the countless trilithons, enormous megaliths some reaching into the thousands of tons, along with highly advanced, incredibly accurate, yet unknown masonry techniques, all tell a story which academics who never seem to mention said features cannot explain. Not to mention melting pots of ancient academic anomalies, such as that of Puma Punku. How can anyone logically claim that the astonishing precision on show at the site, along with the many basalt megalithic platforms weighing many hundreds of tons, all indicative of a past highly capable, technologically advanced civilization, once having been responsible and once one grasps just how many holes can be found within mainstream opinion, they can be forgiven for doubting said tale of events. 
especially when those who tell such tales actively attempt to conceal such unexplainable features. Who built Puma Punku? Is it really over 15,000 years old? How would one cut such precision stonework without precision machinery? It is a place which we find highly compelling. In perusing the amazing archaeological sites within ancient Mexico, one will inevitably be confronted with a site called Cuicuilco. Just south of Mexico City's urban sprawl, a four-step round pyramid that, like all ancient structures, has secrets to tell, a secret like the Great Sphinx, which can reveal to us, all through overwhelmingly physical evidence, a true understanding of its true antiquity. The academic world, with its papers and books abundant, funded, researched, and mass-published, supported by an institute of individuals who seek to destroy all things which disagree with them. These people would have you believe that Quiquilco was constructed at the earliest in 300 BC. However, nature would tend to disagree. Quiquilco was hardly more than a small mound with some scraggly trees growing upon it back in 1922, before Brian Cummings received permission from the Mexican government to begin an excavation at the site. During initial excavations, Brian noted that the well-known Pedegro lava flow had partially engulfed this ancient structure. He became increasingly interested in the site after learning that geologist George E. Hyde dated the Pedegro lava flow at over 7,000 years ago. Additionally, when Brian's workers successfully cut deep trenches down into this ancient lava in an effort to locate the base of the pyramid, they not only passed through the bottom of this layer, but continued through several other eras of sediment before finally reaching the high-quality paving at the original level of the structure. In fact, over 18 feet of ancient sediment lay below this 7,000-year-old volcanic activity, including two other previous lava flows, each separated by layers containing artifacts from no less than two other separate inhabitations of the area by civilizations of varying advancement. Also evidence of a past submersion in no less than six feet of seawater, another ancient structure lending credence to the Great Flood. The pyramid itself, once masterfully constructed using uncut chunks of lava. Amongst the first layer of erosion and decay resting just above the original foundations of the structure, it seems were remnants of a primitive civilization that moved into the area shortly after apparent catastrophe. Is this proof of our civilization once being destroyed? Along with this initial primitive civilization is an extremely ancient lava flow, which is followed by a dramatically far more advanced civilization. Amazingly, Cummings successfully produced dates of over 10,000 years for the original sediments, more than 2,000 years before ancient Egypt was said to have been built, though we feel this was most probably just a re-inhabitation of these powerful pyramidal structures. And although he also found dates far older than 10,000 years, he reluctantly put them down to anomalies and did not record them. After the details of this excruciating and highly efficient research was understood, Brian Cummings predictably experienced the cold shoulder of conspiracy. It seems mainstream archaeology, along with the well-known overpaid figures who partake in this limited public discussion, have successfully avoided the subject altogether. Indeed, it would require a dramatic rethinking of the largely accepted chronological development of man. It would also require an extremely tricky maneuver in verbal acrobatics to get away with explaining the presence of a highly complex, highly capable, highly advanced ancient civilization, building impossible structures well over 10,000 years ago. And although it seems that mainstream archaeology has successfully avoided having to make such a spectacle of their belief systems in their attempted denials of such evidence, it will continue to be something we would like to see.